Welcome to Coffee with Tom and Joanne. I'm Tom Matthews. And I'm Joanne Toronto. Thanks for joining us this morning. We have our favorite guest of the year, our friend Greg Kiley. Greg is in the, Co the Cape Cod market, and he is the manager of a couple of offices down there. And he's here to talk to us a little bit about Cape Cod and the synergy between the Boston suburbs and the Cape Cod market. So Greg, why don't you tell us, tell us a little, little bit about yourself. How long have you been in the business? How long have you been on Cape Cod? Well, first, it's always great to be with my personal realtors. I mean, Tom and Joanne sold my house in Metro West when, when we needed to move down here. And um, little did we know when we were selling, we were starting a grand trend. I mean, we were helped by the events of the past two years, uh, of course. But, you know, my wife, who still works in Cambridge, and at that point, I was working in Newton, we, we made this grand plan to move down here and start a family on the Cape, which was unheard of back then. Um, and now is the big hot trend from what it seems. I've been here for almost seven years now, and I've been in the business since um, the, the heyday pre-financial crisis. So 2005 was when I got my license, yep. had that joy ride of 2005 to 2010, and then was a, was a home buyer and realtor and home seller in the Newton Brookline Wellesley market for the early teens. Um, and then the opportunity to come down here popped up and it was a really great move for me, for my family. Um, I have two lovely daughters who are born and raised on Cape Cod. So they're native Cape Codders. I'm not, I'm a wash ashore um, and will <laughs> always be. But I do get a little bit of Cape Cod street cred because we had two babies here. Um, they were yeah. born in town with house So they're real Cape Codders. Um, but yeah, you know, the Cape, the Cape market is, is fascinating because it is unrecognizable today. And- How do you, know, you mean unrecognizable? What has, what has been the biggest change that you've seen? So, you know, our brand, so these are national realty, put out what they call their luxury outlook um, at the beginning of the year. And it's a, it's a great research paper on trends in luxury real estate. Mm -hmm. And one of the big takeaways is this move to what they're calling the exurbs. You know, we're no longer moving to the suburbs, we're moving to the exurbs. And we all know, and we all felt what the cost of living was doing in the greater Boston market and in the Metro West market and in the Western suburbs. And, you know, it's, it, it, the mix was, was hard for families who were, who were starting up or just growing to, to balance at times. Right. And yet we, you know, we're all sitting here and, and doing business in this format today where we have video screens and lights and cameras and giant monitors and all that stuff. <laughs> and, you know, commuting is not as needed. As I said, my wife works for a firm in Cambridge yeah. and, you know, hasn't left the third floor of our house during the workday for two years. Um, and, you know, so because of that, you could get a waterfront house on the Cape within an hour and a half to Boston for $2 million. And we're talking about a 4,000 square foot renovated, you know, probably a pool, you know, and there's still a Whole Foods down the street, still a Trader Joe's around the corner. You could still get to your doctors in Boston if you needed to. You could still get to Logan in just about the same amount of time. Right. And all of a sudden people realized, wow, the options for me to change my lifestyle are huge. Yeah, lifestyle and, has been a big driver. Yeah, and so the Cape was kind of that safe middle ground, you know, and then you add to it, everywhere else experienced this too. So if you were in New York, went to the Hamptons or Greenwich, or if you were, you know, in all these other places, well, the equivalent house in the Hamptons or Greenwich was 30 or $40 million. And you're talking <laughs> about two to $3 million here. So then all the people who didn't want to spend $40 million said, Oh, I could buy three or four, four million dollar houses on the Cape. Ah. And so, you know, we've really seen our association of realtors just put out a, a, a study that was done by the Cape Cod Commission, which is our county government uh, monitoring organization. And the person who's buying on Cape Cod now is totally different. They are wealthier, the, the income is greater than it's ever been for Barnesville County for the per capita income. Yep. And, you know, it's really changing the dynamic of everything from our shops to our restaurants, to our schools, to, to everything. And it's, you know, it's, it's maybe uh, a little bit of a Cape Cod Renaissance that's going on right now. Yeah. And yet you still have the normal concerns of the, 
the many decades of historical visitation patterns for Cape Cod right. are still embedded in people's soul. And so there's a little bit of a, of a culture challenge going on there. Right. But I think um, a, lot of people are, a lot of people are moving to be primary residents, correct? Yeah. And that's the biggest change, you know, here over my shoulder, you know, there are delivery trucks going up and down the street. This, this street, I'm on Main Street in Osterville right now. Yep. Um, this street's busier in January, February than it ever has been ever before. And our shops are staying open longer. And normally businesses would close down for this six or eight week period right. and open up and open up in, you know, for March college vacation week or April school vacation week. And they're just open now. And that's great for our economy. And it's, it's very much needed after what we've been through for the past two years. But for realtors, you know, we just had the all-time record sales year for the second year in a row. Right. But we went from having 2,000 homes for sale per year to having about 275 right now, all across Cape Cod. I know. And so the sustainability of what we're in is a question. Um, because the Cape is a sandbar, we're making very few new homes. Mm -hmm. The opportunity for development to catch up is restricted here in a way that it's not on the mainland. Right. And so you wonder about how long, and whenever you're in something unsustainable, how long can it continue forward? We we are hopeful because it is such a beautiful place that people seem to have a great affinity for in times of stress. Um, mm -hmm. So there's always that. But also we've shown that you know, the Cape can be a nice home base when yeah. the world it's, gets it's complicated. Definitely, it's yeah. definitely a destination. I mean, I think we're seeing people who are looking for that lifestyle change. And now that Cape Cod, like you said, has life in the winter, people don't mind being down there year round. So, so there's quite a bit of people and in, even people who owned homes prior to this on the Cape yep have invested huge amounts of money into making those homes more adequate to be a year-round residence. Yeah. And, and Greg, did I hear you correctly that you said that the sales went from 2,000 a year to two, like under 300? So that's, that's listings available today. You know, this wow. day, four years ago, there would have been nearly 2,000 homes available. If you were, if you were a home buyer looking to buy your summer home or your vacation home, or you said, Hey, I want to start looking at the start of the year. You'd find um, something. <laughs> you'd find something. There were, you know, there were, you know, one way to put it into stark reality is there was about one <laughs> listing per agent on Cape Cod. Now there are 10 agents for every one listing um, yeah. or more. Incredible. Um, and, and, you know, it's, it, and they're all way more expensive. You know, the number of homes below a million dollars is shockingly low. Right. Um, and so, you know, there was always, every market has a, has a quiet spot, a soft spot mm -hmm. for the Cape. It was always between around 1.5 to 3 million. Mm -hmm. That soft spot is now three to 5 million. Mm -hmm. um, and if you have anything that really comes on below 3 million, it's just gone like that. Wow. And just an incredible amount of growth. It's, yeah. it's, it's unbelievable. It's been fun to be a part of though. And, and we really rely on the collaboration with, which is what I think is so great about our companies. Right. Um, you know, we work for different companies, but the same brand, but we really rely on the marketplace intelligence because it's your friends and neighbors mm -hmm. who are making the decision to become our friends and neighbors. Right. And the, the fact that we can share information back and forth is, is incredibly helpful on our end because it, it helps us plan for what we need moving forward. Where, where are the offices located that you manage? Yeah. So we have, you know, everybody on the Cape does the whole, okay, this is Cape Cod thing, right? Yeah. Like yeah. that's just a thing. Sorry. I've been here long enough. I guess. <laughs> um, so we're on the, um, on the shoulder part. Um, mm -hmm. So we have an office in Sandwich in historic Sandwich village, which it took me a little too long to recognize how cool of a, of a town of a downtown Sandwich village is and yeah. everyone flies right past it at exit uh, one and exit two. Yeah. Um, but you should stop in Sandwich village. There's a lot going on there. And it's just like, it reminds me of like a Concord or I grew up in Southern Connecticut. It reminds me of like a new Canaan, -y, you yeah. know, like really classic colonial era build buildings and stuff like that. Um, so we have one in Sandwich that we actually just opened up less than a year ago in the middle of the pandemic we opened a real estate office which was the opposite of what everyone else was doing <laughs> um and then we have downtown falmouth you know we've been in falmouth for over 15 years and we're fortunate to have 
the number one office in Sandwich out of all brokerages, the number one office in Falmouth out of all brokerages. And then we have Osterville Village where I'm sitting right now, which is also the number one office in this village. Yeah. Um, and Osterville is really cool. You know, Falmouth is Falmouth, everyone knows it. The main street's iconic. Um, and as you're waiting to get on the ferries, you know, come on by, great coffee, great pastries. There's a French bakery down there that's to die for. Mm. Um, so go down there. Um, but then here in Osterville, it's one of only two or three villages on the Cape where the main street isn't one of the two major thoroughfares. So if you think like a route nine, yep. right? Like we have route, we have route 28 and route 6A here. Mm -hmm. Those are the two main roads. 6A is on the north and 28 is on the south. Mm -hmm. Well, Osterville's main street is not either of those roads. It's its own little kind of village main street. Yeah, so it's great lovely. for for getting off the main strip and and lots of you know a lot of the shops that you'd see in a Wellesley or a Newton are here too but some you know everyone knows Wimpy's restaurant that's been around forever um Five Bay's Bistro is like the the hot spot to go for dinner but then we've got this like great little pizza place where um you know people just come from forever to, to stop in and and have a slice of pizza before spending a day on the beach or you know shell fishing or you know going all sorts of cool stuff that happens here in Osterville Village you have to seek out Osterville Village to find it um, but once you do it uh, people swear by it and most of our neighbors are not the you know what people would expect Fairfield County or New York or New Jersey most of our neighbors are Wellesley Weston Concord Lexington you know the Metro West that Metro West pipeline kind of comes right down Route 3 into Osterville Village. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Greg. We love hearing about Cape Cod. And if anybody is considering purchasing a home, we highly recommend Greg and his company. So um, I want to thank everybody for joining us with another edition of Coffee with Tom and Joanne. I'm Joanne Toronto. And I'm Tom Matthews. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, guys.